Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this rocket ship. I saw one on Pinterest, so I thought I had to design one, make one. I had to, and it's not that on very well. Uh, all this little flame down here um, is find my ball. This is impeccable speckle from Loops and Threads. And the color is hot sunshine. So that's what I use, the variegated. Um, it's the best color I could find. Um, you may be able to find something better. Um, my store, Michael's, that I use, is uh, very low on products. Um, in Canada, we can shop on line at a store called Hobby. It's like a Hobby Lobby, but it doesn't have the sales deals all the time. But there is actually no Hobby Lobby in Canada, anywhere. So, I have Michael's. That's about it. I have no Joann's. I don't even know if there's any Joann's in Canada. Um, so, this is the best I could do, and that um, was in store. They didn't even have any online that I could have shipped to me, so... Um, it turned out to not be too bad, actually. Um, I think it looks all right for flames. And then just whatever other colors that you choose. Mine's going to be a completely different color. My, my second one will be a completely different color. But this is the little rocket ship we're going to build today. Let's jump right into this. So I'm using a 4.5 today, but just use whatever hook that your yarn calls for and if you want to go down in um, size a little bit you can this is amigurumi um, most of mine calls for a 5 so I just kind of dip down to a 4.5 it's not extreme but um, whatever your yarn calls for if it calls for a 4 millimeter then you know use a 4 or dip down to a 3.5 so um, I don't have many labels for what I'm using this for. This project was made with scrap yarn. Just, you know, the leftover tiny little balls you can't do anything with. So, that's all I'm using today. Like, literally, this is, I'm starting with this purple. <laughs> and this is kind of scrap yarn. So, my, my yarn mostly is 5 millimeter. I think it calls for, if I can remember correctly. But, um... So I'm just using a 4.5 to be on the safe side, but you can use whatever yarn, scrap yarn you got sitting around. This does not take very long. So we're gonna start with a magic ring of six single crochets. You're going to need a stitch marker because we are going to do this in amigurumi. Hate seams, so didn't see any point of seams. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So this is my first stitch, which is always difficult to get into. The marker goes on the first stitch in the first stitch, and then you can put number two in that same space. So two single crochets in each stitch around gives you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase because they kind of want this to be a little pointy on the top, so that's what we do to get it more pointed. We'll follow up each row with a one single crochet in each stitch, so you should still just have 12 stitches. Your 
Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, and this will bring you up to 18 stitches. That's your one single crochet, that's the one that gets the marker. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one, that's number two, and then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase, followed by a round of one single crochet in each stitch. That's number one, that's number two and three, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And then we're going to do a round of one single crochet in each stitch. This will be on my pause screen. Um, the last stitch before the marker, that's where we're going to change color. So I'll come back at, with to meet up with you at that spot. And we'll change color together. So three single crochet increase this round. Next round is one single crochet in each of the 30 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So I'm on my last stitch. I have one more stitch left before my marker. So this is where I'm going to change color. So I'm going to go in and pull up a loop. I'm going to red. This is just trim. Let me show you what we're doing. It's this part right here. That's all we're doing. And then we're going to a different color. Well, I am. You don't have to. You can do whatever you want. It's your project. So, if you've been following me long enough, you know what I'm about to do. <laughs> that I don't want to weave. I used to weave. I used to be adamant about weaving. Gotta weave, gotta weave. But then I realized how much thicker my project was on one side, not the other. It started to irritate me. So, <laughs> stopped, stopped doing it. So I am not going to be going back to this purple after. I'm going to be going to another color. I have some wild colors going on in this video. But kids like bright in your face colors. So so this particular round, um, we're going to be doing front post single crochets. So starting, here I'm going to zoom in if I can zoom in closer. Oh, I can't. As far as I can go. I'll zoom in with my editing. So starting in around this post right here, so kind of right under where you are, go around that post like that, yarn over, pull through, and finish your stitch. That's your first one. It, it, there's a color change, but if you're not using a color change, put a marker in. You're going to go down into the shared space that you were just in to grab this next post. Yarn over, pull through, finish the stitch. We're going to do that all the way around. 
So as long as you're putting this front post on your hook, you should be good. And don't you don't have to skip over to the next hole. You're sharing that hole space from the from where you were in before. Because you gotta grab the very next post. So this will put an interesting ridge around your whole project. You can probably already feel it happening. Speed up to normal speed because I think you understand what's what's happening. This video is beginner friendly, by the way. That's why I'm taking the time. Good. I didn't know if my little piece of scrap yarn was going to make it all the way around, but it did, it did. So go right up to you can't, don't have any more posts. So I'm switching colors here, so I'm not going to finish this last post stitch. I am going to yellow. Pretty sure. I wrote all the down when I wanted my. Uh oh. I have a knot right off the bat really bright. I'm not sure I'm going to have tags for everything I use, but if you do this tying a knot business, um, just leave your hook in it so you know how, how tight to make it if you're not familiar with tension. It takes a while to get familiar with the whole tension part. <laughs> this much this much red left out of my scrap. That's okay. I'm going to be using it again. So may not be using this little piece. But that tomato color, or this red color is tomato. I didn't have the tag, but I do remember it because I love the red and I use it all the time. Alrighty, so... We're going to be getting into um, the stitches from round eight. So we're on round 10 right now. We're not touching this red rim that we just did. We're going into these stitches, these purple stitches from the row we did prior to doing the front post. These top stitches were all still exposed because we went around the post we didn't use the stitches. So those are the stitches that we're going to get into right now for this row. And that just leaves this ridge nicely exposed by doing that. That's the reason behind it. So just make sure you're getting into the very first stitch. You're going to do four single crochet increase. I move my marker. That's number one. That's four single crochets. So the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. At the end of this row, you should have 36 stitches. So I'm at the end of my row and I just want to show you because it's kind of difficult to see the last stitch. So there's my marker. So you kind of got to roll it around a little bit to get into those, that last, oh sorry, that last, last stitch is right there. 
So it's hard to see, but you just turn it over a little bit. And that's where my increase goes, because I'm just before my marker. So, everything, oh, I got my yellow popping through. I should have probably cut these longer, but it'll be fine. It'll eventually be all inside the rocket anyway, and you, nobody will even notice it. So from here, and we should have 36 stitches. So we're going to do the next 10 rows. It's just going to be one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. So this is what my 10 rows looks like. This is the back, in case you're wondering. That's the front. Um, so this is what my 10 rows looks like. The next round I want you to do in the back loops only. And the reason I want you to do the back loops is because we're going to need to come back and reattach. And I want to use the front loops to reattach with. So this isn't crocheted in. This is crocheted on. So this round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch in the back loops only. So these are your back loops. You don't have to turn it over or anything. You can just get right into them. Now I take this finger and I just push the loop onto my hook. I mean I stick the hook in but it's just a lot easier than trying to fiddle. I usually just I roll my hook down and push on. It works fine for me. I mean, you'll you'll figure out what works fine for you. So that's my back loop. So it leaves all these front loops here all exposed. So when we reattach again, this will be a lot easier. So um, we can stuff it. I'm going to start decreasing in the next round. So we can start stuffing this. Just make sure you stuff it so that it keeps this point. So that's usually the first thing I stuff. So, the next round is going to be four single crochet and a decrease in the full loop, in the full loop, <laughs> in the full stitch. That's number one with your marker. That's four single crochets. And then I'm going to use the front loops here. Front loop, yoink, front loop for my decrease pull through, finish the stitch. I'll show you that again. Four single crochets. So I'll show you a normal one first. A normal decrease is you go in, you pull up a loop, you go in, you pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. An invisible decrease, so it just cuts down on the gapping. You're going to go in the front loop only. So again, I just use this finger to hold everything in place so it's easier. Go in the front loop, but we're not yarning over. You just kind of pop around and go in the second front loop. Then you yarn over and pull through. Then finish the stitch. So the last one will be in slow-mo before my pause screen.
So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease, if I can get my stitch marker out. And this will bring you down to 24 stitches, and you're going to follow this up with a one single crochet round. And that's number one, two and three, and then decrease. Again, I'm going to just continue with my invisible. So do this all the way around. This brings you down to 24 stitches, like I said. And then I just want you to put one single crochet in each of those 24 stitches on your next round. It'll be all on my pause screen, and I will see you on the other side. So I forgot to mention, this last stitch, kind of back out of it, because we're going to be changing to whatever color you're using for your fire, that's what we're changing to now. So I use this, obviously, I've showed you already in the beginning, that's what I'm going to change to. So I'm going to go in for my color change, I'm going to pull up a loop, I'm going to go to my fire. So this much left over from my my half a half a cake. So each cake, so a whole entire cake, is um, half of a seven ounce ball skein. So I had half a cake when I started. So it was like literally a third of a seven ounce ball to build the body. So. That's why I say it's a scrap yarn project because you really, really don't use much at all. So this next round is going to be done in the back loops again because we need the front loops to add all of our fire. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each back loop. So, we are going to continue with our decreases in the next few rounds. We're going to close this right up. So, um, I want you to finish stuffing it. Well, not finish, but continue to stuff it. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 18 stitches. So we're going into the full stitch and all these front loops that we left exposed are going to be what we attach, start attaching our fire to. So that's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease. So again, I'm just using the front loops. So your next round is going to be done in the back loops because we're going to attach the... So we have, when we make our fire, we've got these little short guys and then we've got these longer guys. And these next front loops that we're going to leave exposed are for the longer guys. So it is going to be done in the back loops only and it's going to be a one single crochet decrease. So my decrease in the back loops is just going to be like a regular decrease. 
and I'll show you again. That's my one single crochet. And then in my back loops, I'm going to pull through, pull through. Just like a regular decrease. So this will take you down to 12 stitches. Oh. So you can fasten off. We're cinching, cinch, la, la, cinching. So that's all you need is just a cinching and a weaving tail. Finish filling it. So we take our needle. So we're using the front loops, we're going to go in this front loop and then out the next front loop. Just like that. All the way around. So once you're all the way around, pull it closed, and then I like to pop across and make a knot to go through your loop. And I'm going to do it the other way, making as many knots as you want for the bottom. So these are the front loops we left exposed in that round. So that's going to be for the bigger flame. And then these front loops we've left exposed are going to be for the smaller flame. And then these front loops are going to be what we're going to reattach to in a second with probably the same color that we did this. Yep. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to reattach with the same color that I've just, that I did up top. So, the beginning of your rocket ship. So, I'm going to get my red. I'm not sure I have enough. I've got more red though. So, I'm going to reattach. My camera doesn't like to stay on when I'm in the middle of something. So, turn it over and get go to your back to reattach so you're going to reattach in the um, uh, PDF users you'll see it say reattach in the front loops only from round 21 and this was your round 21 so that just means these front loops so now these are staggered because we work in a spiral when we do amigurumi but I will show you no problem how to take care of that so we just need to make a slip knot. And reattach. So I'm going to reattach down here on the lowest one using a single crochet. Um, I'm going to put another single crochet into this spot so I have something to work with when I come back around. You're going to put one single crochet in each front loop all the way around. So there should be 36.
So that's my 36th stitch and you can see that I'm slightly crooked. <laughs> I'm going to go down into this space and I'm going to come up sideways, kind of picking up this thicker post. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, so I'm making an extra stitch. So from here, you're going to go into your first stitch that you made to start your row, and this is where your marker is going to go. Now you don't really technically need a marker because you've got this thing. So, but if you wanted to weave that in, like I'm probably going to do, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'll weave it in or not. I do know that I'm going to run out of red, so I'm going to have to, to figure that one out. Anyway, your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So that's number one with your marker. That's number two. And then I would just do a regular decrease. Because I don't think it's, it's super duper important. So this will bring you down to um, uh, 27 stitches. So remember when I said we were going to skip that stitch? That's the stitch right there. So we're completely skipping it because that's the sideways stitch that we did. And we're just going to completely go around that and pretend it's not even there. So you should have 27 stitches. One single crochet in each of these 27 stitches. my 27th stitch <laughs> so it should be nicely kind of snugged and you get the back of the work which is the best part so you can just pop over here to the first stitch you made to do a slip stitch fasten my camera loves to shut off in the middle of something so you got a bit of a jog, you got a bit of a jog, but this is the back of your work, so that's the best part. So I tied my two pieces in a knot before I weaved, that way I didn't have to weave very far. And if you do it right, all of it is going to be shoved up underneath that anyway, so. So I just went up, under, and out. And that way you can't see any of that. I did not press down hard enough there. So it should fit nice and snug so that it looks like it's part of the piece and not, not a skirt. It should fit snugly, but you can still lift it up. So that's that. Easy peasy. So um, the fire takes the longest, so I'll just kind of leave that till the end-ish. Um, we can do the window because that's nice and quick. So I'm just going to use um, white for this window part and then I'm going to use this same blue but for this round part. So start with whatever window pane you want. So do a magic ring of six single crochets. 
Oh, that was a sad excuse for a magic ring. You're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. That's number one. That's number two. Two single crochets in each stitch around gives you 12 stitches. Oh, I'm stuck on something. I want you to do one single crochet increase and then when we're done you're gonna do you're gonna change to whatever color you want the outside of the window to be. So that's one single crochet and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. This will give you 18 stitches. So this last stitch, I'm going to be changing color. So I'm, I'm putting two stitches in this last stitch for my sequence, but I'm not going to finish the second stitch. With that, I'm going to get my blue, and I'm going to finish this last stitch with the blue. So with my blue color, I'm going to do 18 front post single crochets. So the same thing that we did up here, we're going to do on here. So the first one you need to get is this one right down here. Again, you don't need a marker if you're changing colors. So again, f remember shared space from the one where you came out, you have to go back in to pick up the next post. Make sure you're doing 18. My last one is here and it's 18. So again, it puts this ridge around it. So again, we're doing the same thing. So do you remember when we turned it over and we used the stitches from the previous row? We're going to do that again. Just because I like it. So, you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around using these white stitches from the row before. You have 18. And again, to get this last stitch down in here, you kind of got to dig. Make sure you're getting both those pieces of yarn, though. 
It likes to turn itself over and hide. So that is it. We're going to fasten off. Easy peasy. So, you know, you got a crisscross thing going on. Just kind of pop around here, grab this stitch. This is going to be your sewing for your sewing. So kind of straightens it out a little bit. So you need a sewing tail. And um, I put a little bit of stuffing under mine when I sewed it on but yeah you get a little bit of this little swirl I'm just gonna cut those all off short so I'm gonna start sewing mine on I'm not gonna stuff it until I'm about three quarters of the way around so just don't put it at the back with all this crap make sure you it's at the front and you can put your swirl any way you want. I'm just going to put mine up. It doesn't really matter. I mean the swirl means nothing. It's just unavoidable basically but you know you could argue that the swirl is there on purpose because that's what our galaxies look like. <laughs> no. I'm just being an idiot but. So anyway get your window sewn on. So make sure it sits up like this, you know, it's not rocket science. <laughs> I've been finding a way to, I've been dying to say that. Anyway, that was stupid. But you're probably laughing at me because I'm stupid, so either way, you laughed. So if you've watched my channel enough, you know that sometimes I like to go around twice if I've got the extra, the extra just to make sure it's sewn on properly. And that's because I suck at sewing. So I'm going to leave this video off with showing you the fire. And then when we come back in chapter two, um, we're just going to be doing all that's left is attaching all the fire and then making making these three legs that'll be it for chapter two so um the fire <laughs> the fire we have a small fire and then a big fire so the small fire is making a slip knot, chaining 12, and eat, putting two single crochets in each stitch all the way back up. That's what the fire is. And you've got to make 12 of these short ones. So 
um, it can be time consuming because you got to do 12 but when we come back in the next chapter your homework should be done <laughs> I'm passing out homework now and um, we should be able to just sew them all on because again that's well I mean actually that's not as not time consuming it's about as time consuming as making all these which are fairly quick each one but when it, it you know it adds up so if you're just sitting around on the couch watching TV tonight you can just kind of whip these off so I'm in my last stitch and I show you what I do if I can ever get through it so I'm gonna fasten off with a bit of a sewing tail, so not much. This is where I started, so that's my slip knot. I'm gonna tie these two. And I did this with every single piece of flame. Tie it a tight double knot. Don't cut off your straggler because we actually use it to attach with. So that's the small flame. You gotta make twelve. And then the large flame is chain 16 and do the exact same thing. So all this is going to be on my screen. You don't have to try to remember it. So chain 16. That's my 16. And then you do the exact same thing. Two single crochets in each stitch all the way back up. That's how you make your little curly cues. So fasten off with just a little little sewing tail and we do the same thing tie your starter straggler with your ender straggler there you go these guys you only make five so five of the big ones and 12 of the small ones and you will have enough to put them all in the the big ones go in these um, front loops obviously we're not using every single loop because we got more than five and the same thing with these we have more than 12 so we're not using every single front loop but the small ones go around here and then we'll make the these landing gears I've got two done because I make a video I don't want to get my <laughs> I don't want to get my flames done so and then the landing gears they're shaped like this because they go around this part and they get sewn on like that and you need three of those so that we'll do in chapter two and then we'll add all the flame in chapter two and end this video so I will see you chapter two.
Hi guys, welcome back. So, last night you were supposed to do all your little fires. I got 12 of my small little guys here and 5 of my big guys here, which I'm going to be starting with. We need to put these on prior to making the landing gear because it's going to be way harder to put them on. The landing gear comes down and blocks the front loops here. So, cause that's how it's sit, that's how they go on. So we have to put the fire on first. So, remember we tied all these? We're gonna start with the long sewing one. And we don't actually spend a whole lot of time attaching this, but find your bottom, so you only have five So I used two stitches to do this. So I went through one and I went through the next one. I tied a knot, a double knot, and I weaved. Oh, I split that. I wish I hadn't split that. So that's, I didn't actually sew. You can do whatever you want. You can t attach them however you want to attach them. But I just tied them in a, and I don't know why I left so much of this, but. And then I just weaved them up and out. That is it. And that way they still move, you know, they're not sewn in place. They will wiggle and move and, ugh. but they're attached. They'll be fine. So I'm going to skip one because I only have five to do. So I'm right on my last stitch. I skipped one again in the middle. So I'm pretty sure you know how to do this evenly. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure yours are fine. So these are the long ones and then the short ones we do the exact same thing. We just use these front loops up here. So first let's count our loops. So we have 12 stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 24. So we have 24 stitches. I made you do 12 fire. So that means that you can do two stitches per fire, which means not skipping anything in between. So this goes into one stitch, your straggler goes into the next stitch, and no missing stitches in between. And that's what's going to make it flare out, is it being so close together, so that it's not hanging like your long ones here, it'll actually flare out. Because it's going to get squishy.
There we go. Oh, my fire. So it sticks out like that because they're so close together. So, but that's what you want. And then your longer flames down below. So there, our flames are all done. So next is our landing gear. So I am using purple. These two done. So that's the shape we're making them. And I'm using purple because I got purple on top. So I'm using my 4.5 still and we're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So we're not slip stitching, we're still in amigurumi. So just jump into your next stitch. And that's your one single crochet. My stitch marker on the first stitch. Your next stitch gets the increase. So two single crochets in the same space. And repeat, so this brings you up to nine stitches. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. So you can flip this right side in if you make sure your center's closed enough. <clears throat> Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 12 stitches. And this is going to be followed up by one single crochet in each of the 12 stitches for your next row. That's number one. That's number two. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. So continue this all the way around, then do your one round of one single crochet in each stitch. I'll put that all on my pause screen, and I will see you on the other side. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 15 stitches and it's going to be followed up by one single crochet in each stitch after. So, that's one single crochet. That's three single crochets and then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. So follow my pause screen. And I will see you on the other side. So for this next round, we're going to start increasing, but we're only going to increase on one side. This is where we start coming out here. So your next round, this is number one with the stitch marker. You're going to do five single crochets. That's number one with your marker. That's my five single crochets. 
And then this next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And then you're going to do one single crochet and then an increase. One single crochet and an increase. And then five single crochets back to your marker. So you should have 18 stitches. I want you to put one single crochet in each of those 18 stitches. Alright, your next round is going to start with five single crochets again. So that's number one. This is my fifth single crochet. So your next stitch gets an increase. And now you're going to do one single crochet increase three times. So one single crochet, increase one single crochet, increase, one single crochet, increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. That's what an increase is. And now you're going to do six single crochets back to your marker. So you should have 22 stitches for the next three rows. I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 22 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So that's my three rows. That's what it should look like right now. So this part's been increased and this part did not. Um, let's start stuffing it because we're going to start decreasing now. So your next round We're going back down to 18 stitches. Right now you have 22 stitches. Your next round we're going to do seven single crochets. That's number one with your marker. That's my seven single crochets. Get that out of the way so you're not distracted. So now you're going to decrease four times. I'm going to use my front loop. So I'm going to do the invisible one, which is if you remember front loops, you'll yank around to the second front loop, yarn over, pull through those two, and then finish the stitch. That's my first one. That's my second one. Third one. And the last one. And then you should have seven single crochets back to your marker and 18 stitches. So for the next two rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches.
just want to make sure I'm <laughs> stuffing this about the same. Alright, so we're going to start this round off differently than the other rounds. We're going to start off by de decreasing. So I want you to decrease the next four stitches. So these first two, decrease, put your marker in. Decrease these next two stitches. So the first four stitches get decreased. And then I want you to do 10 single crochets. That'll bring you around to the other side. Did I just do? Two, three. And you should have four stitches left, and you're going to decrease those. So decrease these two, and then decrease these two. And we're going to do the same thing again, but not quite, because <laughs> our numbers are different, right? So we're going to decrease these two. Oops. Put our marker in. Then we're going to decrease these next two. We're going to do six single crochets. And you should have four stitches left, and you're going to decrease those. So decrease these two, and then decrease the last two. And then we put some more stuffing in it before we finish this off. So your last round is going to be one single crochet decrease. You're not going to get all the way around. You're going to have one extra stitch. And I just want you to put one single crochet in it. So that's one single crochet. And then your decrease. So do that so you can't do it anymore. So three times around for my one single crochet decrease, and then I have one stitch left. And you're just going to put a single crochet in there. Uh, you should have seven stitches. Not that it really matters because we're done. So you can fasten off with a sewing tail and then finish stuffing it. We're going to cinch the top. So make sure the top's got a significant amount of stuffing. Because it's so small, you are going to end up with a little bit of a bump. Just making sure that I'm stuffing it the same. So when you make your other ones, you have to make sure that they're kind of stuffed all the same. And I'll let you go do that in a second. I just want to finish this one first. So I'm going to go through the front loop, the front loop, and out the front loop. Just like we cinch everything else in the front loop, out the front loop. You're only going to do it three times and then you kind of run out of stitches. So pull that closed and then give it a bit of a knot to keep it that way. 
we go that back and forth. So now you've got this bit of a bump on here and it's not very attractive. But you should be able to get rid of it when you um, weave. So I'm, I don't want you to, you don't need to actually weave, but when you go back in to kind of bring this bump down, um, come out where you're going to be sewing. I might get my rocket. So you're going to be sewing like this. So I just popped out here just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So well, I guess I can do it on this one. So when you come down, you're sewing in here. This is what gets that's what gets sewn to the rocket. Not not the flat side, the side where we increase and stuff. So when you come out, you're gonna pop out where you're gonna start sewing from, which is gonna be this spot. So that should pull your bump down a little bit. I don't think I had enough stuffing in mine, so I do have a little bit of a bump. But So now I'm to where I need to be to start sewing. But if you prefer to start sewing on from here, going into the next stitch and through, um, that's perfectly fine. You can do it that way, but just come down to where you're going to start sewing from, if that makes sense. So these two, I came out the back side because that's the side I'm going to start sewing on. But this last one is going to be, I'll just use for the one at the back, and I'm going to start sewing from this side, and I'm just going to pull right through. So I sew, I, I don't sew, so I sew weird. But anyway, just come out wherever you're going to start sewing. So go ahead, I'm going to put the pattern on the screen for this. Go ahead, I'm going to start sewing mine on, and then I will meet you back. Um, so if you want to start sewing yours on, it's fine. Uh, and I'll meet you back when I have uh, at least one more to do. So I've got my first two sewn on. I've met up here and I'm going to tie a double knot. I just don't want to pull that hard that I'm making divots where I was sewing. I'm going to tie a double knot that kind of went up underneath here and I'm going to cut it off but I'm leaving a, some nubbies and then I'm going to poke it down pull my thing back down so this is where my third one goes I made this tail a little extra long because actually I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my long needle. So this one does sit lower because the rocket kinda leans back a bit. So this one sits very differently than the other ones. So you just need to put your first two on and then figure out where this needs to go. So I'm just going to go in. I'm trying to keep the stitches split because I uh, 
want it to be nice and tight so I go through the yarn not through the holes so once you determine where you want your third rocket leg to be and go back down the same hole but pop out in a different spot That's pretty good. So anyway, finished sewing mine on. Now that I've determined where my spots are. So because this is my last piece, I'm going to do a small little wee knot now that I've pulled it really tight and then I'm just going to weave down and once I pull, you're not going to even see that knot up there. And that is all I did. And I think my other one's pretty secure, but you probably sew way better than me, so. So, that is my rocket ship. All done. <laughs> Kids are gonna love it. I got a few spots that I just gotta pop out. I kinda divoted because I pulled it too tight. I'm not so sure I'm trying to pop out the divots or just p grabbing some yarn and stretching it so that it comes up. Anyway, I don't think kids are really going to care about little divots. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.